Hi everybody and welcome to this week's episode of Gaffer and Gear. Today I'm doing a follow-up review. A couple of months ago I did this review here on the Aladdin 200 watt fabric light. Now since then I've bought two of these. These are the Aladdin 350 watt fabric light. Basically the only difference on the light is there are more LED emitters and it uses more power. The other difference is the controller. The controller system for the 200 was pretty straightforward and easy to use. Um, Aladdin give you this setup for running the 350. So this is gonna be the bulk of our talking is um, about this. Now, depending on how you use the system, this is either incredible genius or utter stupidity. Um, I think it's a mixture of both. So uh, let's get into the review. Now, as I said in the intro, this is um, pretty much like a part two. I've already reviewed the 200 watt, now I'm reviewing the 350 watt. Now, quite literally, uh, the only difference in the mats is literally more light emitters. They're the same light emitters, there's just more of them, and uh, it's a 48 volt system. So basically because it's the same light emitters, if you wanna have a look at uh, technical data or a scientific review, Go to the previous review for the 200. The uh, link is below, and that has all that information um, in there. So that's gonna save us a lot of time in this review. Okay, so why did I buy the, uh, the 350s? Well, when I had a look at the, two, uh, the 200s, which Lemac was generous enough to supply me with a, a demo one, uh, when I had a look at the 200, it wasn't too bad, it was pretty good. But I just found myself wishing I just had a little bit more light level. Um, it was okay, but it would have been nicer if it was a little bit brighter, particularly in wider shots, things like that. So having bought the, uh, the 350s, uh, I can say that uh, these are running at typically 60 to 70% brightness in my wide shots. So I've got that little bit more light level than I needed, but I've still got um, light level in the bank. So let's talk about what you get when you buy an Aladdin 350 system, because I just want to point out here that this is not actually the light. This is the light with some other things attached to it and it's attached to a frame. Now, when you buy the system, you get, of course, the light mat, okay, so, which is a, a, a flexible, foldable mat. So the idea is this mat actually folds down to this size. It actually folds into one sixth its size. So it, it's very easy to, to transport around. And in the kit I ordered, we got, uh, it came with the DOP Choice uh, Snap Bag, which is the soft box that's on the front. Now, um, you also get uh, two of these head leads. So you get a short head lead and a longer head lead. So that um, enables you to, if you're on a big stand or on a menace arm, you don't have to have a tangle of a long lead. You can choose between your two leads. Uh, you also get the, um, amongst all of this, I suppose the most accurate word for this is mess, um, you get a the controller, of course. Um, the controller is very, very good. Um, I don't use the controller hooked up to all this. I use it mounted to the stands. So we're going to go into that in a bit more detail later. But the controller is really, really good. It dims in 0.1% increments. So it's really, really handy at the low level. Um, uh, by color, of course. Now, uh, have a look at the previous review. We'll talk about the accuracy of the, uh, the by color dialing in. It is extremely accurate up to, I think it was 5,800 Kelvin. Now above 5,800 degrees Kelvin, um, it, the, the readings are not accurate. So have a look at the previous video. I talk about that in depth there. Now it, the uh, controller has uh, a nice display on the side so you can actually see what you're dialing in. There's no guesswork. Um, it also has five pin DMX in and out on the bottom. So that's fantastic. You can control it through a, um, a console. The, uh, it also has Lumen Radio in and out, so uh, you can control it on a professional lighting app. So very, very handy. Now in the middle of all this is what um, Aladdin called the adapter. So I'll just show you the adapter here. Now the adapter um, allows you to link two small transformers together to make one big transformer. So the unit also ships with uh, these two smaller transformers, so you need two of them. Now bear in mind it is 350 watts at 48 volts, so it is quite a bit of power. So the transformers come with these uh, V-lock plates. So you literally mount the uh, two of the transformers to your um, to the V-lock plates on the adapter. 
they plug into the unit and, uh, and off you go. Now, the other thing that's good about this is it, of course, has V-Lock plates, so you can run it off batteries. Now, the Aladdin 350 Fabric Light does come with a few kit options. The kit option I selected included the DOP snap bag that's on the front. So basically, the snap bag Velcro attaches. Now, it can attach directly to the um, fabric light itself, because the fabric light has Velcro on it facing the front. So the one thing you don't get with the fabric light is you don't get a frame system. The idea is um, you use your pre-existing blade frames that you have and then mount the fabric light to that. Um, and then you can mount, um, once you've mounted the fabric light to that, you can mount the soft box to the front of the fabric light. Um, I haven't done this. I found with the blade frames, they tend to sag, and uh, particularly when you're going over the top of a product. So what I did is I went to my hardware store and bought some of this, it's called uh, Cube Block Aluminium, and I bought some corners. Um, and then I also bought some Velcro uh, and mounted the Velcro to, the, um, to my frame. Um, I then also got a, um, a nut and bolt, which I use as my spigot and some reinforcing steel so that the, uh, the hole I drilled for the bolt doesn't uh, eventually snap. Now, uh, my whole frame kit here cost me about 120 Australian dollars to build. Now here's the one advantage with uh, doing this, and this is why I think this is a, a good option. Um, with the frame kit, I put the Velcro on the back and on the front. So instead of having the light mounted to the front and then having the softbox mounted to that, I've got the light mounted on the back and the softbox mounted to the front. This gives me um, a couple of advantages. Number one is I transport these fully assembled. I don't assemble them on set. I've got them ready to go. So if I decide that I need, um, or the job needs, just the mat without the frame, very simple. I can just rip that off, no problem at all. Now, if, um, if I need the firepower of uh, the light running without the softbox attached, that's no problem at all. I can just uh, remove the softbox and I'm at full firepower. Okay, so that gives me a, a lot of very, very quick, versatile options. Now, one thing I will point out here is these are actually running at 25%, so they're, they're very, very dimmed at the moment. So this, this enables me to work very fast having this, um, having this frame system. The other difference is the gap here, uh, the additional space between the LEDs and the front of the diffuser that's, uh, that this frame gives me is just enough that it gets rid of any LED dots on the front diffuser. Now, if you don't get what I mean by that, have a look at this photo. In this photo, I've exposed for the front panel of the light. You can't see any LED light emitters on the diffuser. However, when you have a look at this other LED light and I've exposed for the front panel, you can clearly see all of the LED light emitters. This is a major problem when it comes to reflective surfaces. Now, the other thing you might notice is, uh, if you've looked into buying these, is that I don't have the spaces in here. So when you buy these, they come with spaces. So I've got what remains of my spacer here. So the idea is there's this fabric mounted in between and um, basically the front panel can't press up against the LED light emitters. The spacers uh, maintain a bit of space. So the problem I found with the spacers is um, they were causing a pattern in the front diffuser and that pattern was reflecting on surfaces. So that was, uh, for me, just as irritating as having the dots. The other thing I found was the spacers literally get in the way of the light emitters. So as soon as I removed the spacers, I got another 12.5% brightness. When I put up the review for the 200 watt Aladdin fabric light and mentioned I was gonna be getting 350s, a lot of people messaged me asking what I thought about the uh, power supply um, solution that they have. So I'll basically explain what's going on here. So there's the power adapter, two um, transformers mounted to it, and the controllers mounted to it, which is you know, optional, you don't have to do that. Now let's talk about the obvious um, problem here, and that's the amount of connection points. So let's count the connection points. We have one, okay. That goes to two, which goes to three, which goes to four, which goes to five, which goes to six, which goes to seven and eight, which goes to nine and 10. So 10 connection points to turn one light on. Now that is, of course, assuming that you don't have the controller mounted to a light stand. If you have the controller mounted to the light stand and the power supply on the deck, then you're gonna have to have another lead in between here and here. So that gives you a total of 
11 connection points. Now that seems totally ridiculous, but I'll explain why it's actually not as stupid as it seems. So what you've got to bear in mind with the Aladdin fabric light is that the thing packs down. It can fit into a small case. You can build up a frame system, pack this down, and you can have it so that it fits on carry-on luggage on an aeroplane. Now, let's have a look at the uh, power supply solution again, but without the uh, controller attached, okay? So basically, you've got your two transformers, your adapter box, and the unit also has, and a lot of people forget this when they review it, it also has a V-lock option, okay? So it's got a power option. Now let's compare that to a power supply, okay? So if you wanna run, and this is the thing I discovered, if you wanna run a 350 watt, 48 volt light, you can't do it off a single transformer, not unless it's got a very, very loud cooling fan. So that leaves you with only one option, which is a PSU, a power supply unit. So basically a PSU is two transformers or multiple transformers inside a case. So you got that, two transformers, two transformers, so pretty much the same. Now, um, this is what I run my systems with because um, 11 connections is a bit of a joke, right? So I use uh, transformers. But uh, let's have a think about this. If you've got a system that you wanna pack down, maybe fit in the boot of a car, take on an, you know, take on an aeroplane, having your luggage at a, um, at a hotel, you don't, it doesn't make sense to have a lightweight light, and this light weighs just three kilograms, and then have an extremely heavy power supply. Um, this unit here, this, this solution they have here, is about, it feels like about one third less weight than this. Plus, it has a battery solution, whereas the power supply does not have a battery solution. So this isn't as stupid as it seems. However, having said that, I don't use this. It's too many connection points, and I found it's, it's just, it's frustrating, and something inevitably uh, disconnects and goes wrong. So I'm actually using a, uh, a PSU. It's got a Nutrix connector, which won't disconnect, and I run a three pin lead out. So basically, I plug this into the wall outlet, and then I run a long three pin lead to my light. So I've only got the one cable on the ground, okay, going to my uh, power supply at the wall outlet, which enables me to move this around quite simply. Now I have the controllers mounted to the light stands with super clamps. Now I have this, the controller connected to the super clamp in the case that I transported in. So I literally take that out, mount it onto the light stand, plug the power cable into the PSU, plug it into the wall outlet, and I'm off and running. Okay, so one very quick pickup. So uh, you might be a gaffer and you might be thinking, well, I don't need to make up or buy a PSU. I'll just use my Sky Panel, RE Sky Panel PSUs to run it. Um, well, you could, but you'd have to uh, crack open the, uh, the PSU and trim the voltage down because the Sky Panel PSUs, um, the factory setting is not 48 volts out it's 49.95. So uh, at that voltage, uh, you're not gonna do any damage to the controller here, um, but it will come up with an exclamation mark and tell you that the power set too high. Okay, so before we talk about running this off batteries, one thing to point out, um, this actually isn't a 350 watt panel. As best as I can figure it, I think it's about 325 watts, because I don't have anything that measures um, uh, DC, um, DC uh, amperage or DC wattage. So you might be a bit confused. They're advertising it as a 350 watt light. Um, what's going on here? Well, if you run it off a, a wall outlet, if you plug it into a power outlet, the whole system pulls 350 watts maximum running at full power. And that's regardless of whether you use the uh, transformers that mount on this or a PSU. It's 350 watts total load running off AC power. So running off DC power, it's a bit more efficient because it's a DC light. Okay, so now I've cleared that up. Now in the intro, um, I said that depending on how you use the system, you will think that, um, that this is genius or stupidity. Now we're gonna get into the genius part. Okay, this is something I really love about the adapter and I really could have done with this years before. Okay, so, um, I'm just gonna pop some V-locks on. Now running this thing off, um, off V-locks, and here I'm using uh, 260 watt hour V-locks, which I rate at 250 watt hour because they're a bit old. So running it off these uh, batteries, I get, um, why aren't you powering up? What am I missing? Oh, I forgot to flick the uh, battery switch. Running this at full power, and here's full power, 
okay? I get uh, a staggering one hour and 45 minutes off the two batteries. So one hour, 45 minutes. That is crazy uh, good run time, you know, at full power again. Now here's the interesting thing. This is where this is, this is genius. Let's say I'm running this handheld, okay? So, because remember, it weighs less than three kilograms. I could walk around holding this, okay? So let's say I'm shooting handheld and I, I'm not running it at full power. Well, if I'm running it at less than 50% uh, brightness, I only need the one battery, okay? So 48 volt system running off a single 14.8 volt V-lock. That's how clever this little box is. Now, uh, let's say I'm running for long periods of time and I have to swap batteries and I'm only running it dimmed. Well, no problem. We can hot swap the batteries. Okay, so I just get that one off and uh, the connectors are new, so it's sticking pretty good at the moment. So I can hot swap batteries, no problem at all. So that's where this is really, really genius. Now, this is what super excites me about this is I have um, lots and lots of 48 volt lights, okay? So I've got uh, RE sky panels, um, I've got TGL lights, and basically, because this is 48 volts regulated output, so regardless of what batteries um, you're, you're running, whether it's 14.8 volt batteries or the uh, 26 volt batteries, one or two batteries, this thing is outputting 48 volts uh, via a three pin. So I can run my uh, sky panels off this, um, as long as I don't exceed um, 350 watts power draw, which is what the box is rated at, unfortunately. I did check that with Aladdin. I can run my um, TGL 200s. So this is fantastic. This is a versatile little box, um, this adapter. Now I actually don't keep this box with my Aladdin kit. I keep it with my V-Lock batteries. Very handy piece of kit. I'm sure gaffers will love this. Uh, just a quick pickup shot, something I forgot to say, which I better point out. Um, it's pretty obvious, but I better point it out. If you're running it off one battery, you are, of course, limited to the uh, maximum output that your battery can do. So um, for my batteries, that's 220 watts, but it might be less for your batteries. Now, um, just a very quick story. I had a Sky Panel S60 uh, down on the deck facing upwards doing a fire effect, running really, really dimmed, and I was able to run that off one single V-Lock battery um, using this, so fantastic. Okay, now before we wrap up, I'm gonna give my own equipment a bit of a personal plug. So using my lithium ion battery packs, we can run one of these lights for three hours and 40 minutes continuously at full power per battery. Now, I also have some 40 degree snap grids coming for these, so that'll nicely round off the kit. Okay, before we go, let's do a shootout. So what I'm gonna do is put one of these in tungsten, ramp it up to full power, and see how it compares to a 2000 watt halogen light running through a full grid cloth, which is roughly about the same diffusion. And then we'll do a shootout comparing this in daylight to an RE sky panel with an octodone on it running through the same magic cloth. Now the sky panel will be running raw LEDs, no diffusion in for maximum output. I'm Andrew Locke, see you on the next episode of Gaffer and Gear.